Welcome to the WIHS Ministry Roundtable, a bi-weekly video podcast and radio program where we meet in studio with ministry leaders for an extended interview to discuss from a biblical worldview, spiritual and practical topics that are both meaningful and engaging. I'm your host, Jessica Chenery, and joining the roundtable today... Phil Belcher from Cheshire Bible Chapel in Cheshire, and he is an elder at his church. And then Pastor Wes Beeson from Mount Zion Redemption Church in Windsor. And then we also have Pastor Skip Eggeman from Valley Community Baptist Church in Avon. Welcome. Good morning. Thank you, Jessica. Good to be here. Thank you. It's good to have you here. All right, so today's topic is, um, so who is a person in the Bible that has inspired you or affected you uh, in your personal walk with Jesus? And I have no idea who each of their persons are, so um, it's a little bit of a surprise to me, uh, and I am looking forward to finding out. So, all right, so let's go around the room, and you guys can introduce the person that you're going to talk about today. Who wants to start? Pastor Skip? Sure. <clears throat> I'll begin, Jess. Uh, one of the characters in Scripture that has always, uh, that I've always enjoyed, that's impressed me, but I've always enjoyed uh, reading his story. And his story unfolds just like, just a, it's a great drama. It's uh, just like sitting down and reading a novel. And that's Joseph in the Old Testament. Hmm. Going all the way oh. back to Genesis and just following uh, Joseph as a young man right through his entire life. And uh, to me, there's just been so many uh, nuggets of gold that I've been able to pull uh, out of that and apply it to my life. Uh, and to, it's a great, easy story to preach and yeah. uh, just a lot of fun <laughs> to uh, to be involved with that. So that's that's who I'm dealing with today All right, is, uh, perfect. Old Testament Joseph. We, we love Joseph. Lots of content there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. How about Phil? Good morning. Good morning. Um, when I first started teaching, I, I was more of an Old Testament kind of guy mm. because uh, growing up in the church, you hear a lot of New Testament mm. messages and, and that sort of thing. And... Um, I kind of progressed away, not necessarily away from the Old Testament, but more latching on to uh, individuals in the New Testament. So my character comes from the book of Philippians <laughs> and uh, chapter two, and his name is Epaphroditus. Mm. Mm. Okay. And um, in a bit, maybe we can get into yes, why, I, why mm. Epaphroditus. Yeah, mm. I'm excited to hear that. Mm -hmm. Okay, Pastor Wes. Uh, my character is going to be uh, Daniel and the Hebrew boys. Mm -hmm. They kind of mm -hmm. tie together. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm motivated by that because they were in a secular culture. And uh, some of their actions yeah. showed how we ought to behave in a secular culture. I noticed that some things they accepted and some things they stood, took a, mm -hmm. stood a stand against. And mm -hmm. that to me was very motivational and, and can teach us a lot about how to conduct ourselves when we're in a secular culture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like that. Uh, mm -hmm. that. That is a good lesson too. All right, so let's get started. We'll start with Pastor... <laughs> uh, who wants to start? Pastor Skip? Sure, okay. yes, that'd be great. All right, so tell us about Joseph. What, um, how, how did Joseph inspire you or affect you? Okay, well, the story of Joseph covers quite a large spot you know, of uh, uh, here in the Old Testament. Uh, a whole lot more than Epaphroditus. <laughs> it's only a couple of verses. <laughs> but jo right. jo Joseph right. spreads out <clears throat> and uh, there's a whole lot there. Um, remember your, as you, some of you are Sunday school teachers and and uh, you've, you've taught uh, Joseph with a coat of many colors and all of that. <laughs> but we're kind of going through that uh, quickly. But Joseph, with his brothers, the relationship with his brothers, and he's, mm -hmm. he's uh, one of the younger ones next to the youngest and um, struggled with relationships in the family. 
uh, came from uh, uh, you know, basically a family that had a number of different problems as you go through the different uh, individual brothers. Uh, they each had their own set of issues and things like this. So, uh, so Joseph was the favorite of his of his dad mm. and his dad showed it uh here dads be careful uh mm. showing favor with uh with your kids and things like this and um there came a time remember when joseph was out looking for his brothers the brothers were way out in the far country and uh they came up with a plan to get rid of him mm. let's get rid of this younger brother who is uh in their mind just a smart ass and uh, a little too prideful, hmm. and uh, they just felt that uh, they needed to get rid of him. So they did. And so you begin in Joseph's life uh, this uh, journey of ups and downs, and he's actually thrown into what we would call a, a dry well, a cistern, a pit, while, and um, while his brothers are eating lunch, uh, these in the pit, and uh, then uh, they come up with a scheme of uh, selling him to a passing group of merchants, and Joseph ends up down in uh, in Egypt, and then we go on. He's sold into uh, the home of Potiphar, who was the head of Pharaoh's secret service, and just in and. Uh, even in that hard time, and this is just the beginning of his hard times, he finds favor in God's mm -hmm. eyes, and he finds favor in Potiphar's eyes. As Wes was saying, the, uh, the young men in Daniel's story lived in a, t a godless culture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the same thing with, with Joseph. Yeah. He was in a godless culture. He was in Egypt. And living in a home that didn't care anything about Jehovah God, and yet they, he found favor in her eyes, and so we go on from there. So I'll, I'll stop there. There's a whole lot of stuff we could dig into, <laughs> but uh, the idea or, or, or what one of the things that makes him stand out in my mind is his perseverance, his yeah. character. He never turned his back on God, hmm. and how easy it would have been for Joseph when he's on the bottom of the pit, sold to these merchants, sold into, uh, as a slave, yeah. basically, to say, hey, God, <laughs> what's going on? Where are you? You've left me. I'm out of here. But he didn't. And we, we continually see through the story of Joseph that he found favor in God's eyes. Yeah. He, he definitely represents that uh, that life of just because we have God in our life, it's it's not empty of troubles. And I like how you said he, he persevered. Mm -hmm. um, I think that mm. that is a good lesson for us Christians to learn, that mm. when uh, life isn't going the way we want, we need to persevere. Yeah. Um, that is that is who God created us yeah. to be, is you know, persevere people. Right. And do you want have something to add to Joseph? Yeah, I'll just say uh, real quickly that he had a dream way back when mm -hmm. that didn't manifest itself until 15 years right. later. Right. And mm -hmm. it was easier during that time of turmoil to forget that God made him a promise. Mm -hmm. And we find out that God is a promise keeper. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but absolutely. absolutely. He ends up right where God said he was going to end up. Yeah. Stay yeah. with God. And watch God work. Yeah. In, in, in God's perfect timing. Yes. Yeah. Oh, in that's a good lesson yeah. to, to learn. Yeah. That, i got to behave know. myself now because I'm ready to preach that. <laughs> Absolutely. You and me both. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, Phil, what do you think of Joseph and what we can take away? I, you know, I, I appreciated the word you used, perseverance, where um, regardless of a circumstance, he remained faithful, as mm -hmm. Skip was saying, that, um, you know, he, he was focused on task. He was walking in a manner worthy of the calling of which he was called mm -hmm. um, to reference. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I really appreciate Joseph's um, maybe unflappability. Uh, he, you know, he was human. Yeah. Uh, obviously, he, he sweated, right? But, but he remained faithful mm -hmm. and focused. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right, so we have Joseph and his perseverance. 
All right, so Pastor Wes, yeah. all right, you're going to talk about Daniel. Okay, um, it really starts in Daniel chapter 1, but uh, uh, it's interesting in the story is that in chapter 2, Nebuchadnezzar had a dream, and Daniel revealed this to him when all the magicians couldn't reveal the dream to him. And the King Nebuchadnezzar made this all these special things, said all these good things about Daniel's gods. Mm. And then God, and then by chapter 3, <laughs> we get to uh, a situation where uh, he builds this image and declares that everybody should worship this image, and if they don't, mm. uh, they would be thrown into this fire. Mm. And uh, that's where I'm going because uh, the Hebrew boys didn't. Yeah. That, that was the time for them to take a stand, and they took a stand. They didn't. Mm. So they chose their time, but this when they took a stand. And uh, it's interesting when you read the story in, in Daniel 3 because the king didn't see that they were doing it. They were accused mm. by those who were jealous of the position that they were in. Yeah. Mm. And that, that word accused mm. brings me to memory that that's what the devil does. Yeah. He mm. looks for an opportunity mm. to accuse right. and takes full advantage of it. Yeah. I also notice in the story that uh, there was a fiery furnace. And the, and the Bible tells, tells me that they were bound. Yeah. And... Uh, it also tells you that the, those that threw them in the fire furnace were killed as they threw them in. But what really hit me is that when the king looked in that furnace, they were having church. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. There was oh, yeah. God was with them. Mm. And in the last verse in Mark says, Lord, I'll be with you even until the ends of the earth. And mm. God, when the king looked in, yeah. He was amazed. Though they were thrown in bound, hallelujah, he saw them loose. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Wow. And then they, when, when he looked, he saw there's, there's one like the Son yeah. of God that right. tells you that no matter where you find yourself, no matter how hot your fire gets, God stands solid with you. Mm. Amen. And that, not only that, but that situation provided an opportunity for the king and everybody else to see that as we sing the song at a church, Daniel's God surely will deliver. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And they came out of there not affected by the fire that right. they were in. Right. Mm. Hallelujah. And became a testimony to the king. Look what the Lord has <coughs> done. Mm. God is a mm. keeper. Yeah. Ah, yeah. mm. oh, I love that's that. That's why I'm moved by that. I love yeah. that. You know, one of the things that's always impressed me, Wes, Scripture says that they were walking around yes. in the fire. Yes, <laughs> it's yes. like, they well, there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're just enjoying it. Did not it. affect them at all. No. No. no, and then, like you said, when they came out of the fire, didn't affect them. They, it said the scripture yeah. says it didn't even smell That's like right. fire. I don't look like what I've been through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Good thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Can you say that again? I don't look like what I've been through. And right. Believe me, I've been through some stuff. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. If I tell you the story, I write a book, but I don't yeah. look like what I've been through. Yeah, I like, like that. And they didn't look through. like what they have been through. Amen. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, no trace. Mm. Oh, wow, that was that that was great. I like that. All right, so we have Phil. You're the last one to This so, is interesting. <laughs> so my guy is Epaphroditus. Mm. And um, I love a story, you know, I, I really do. And, and unlike Joseph and, and Daniel, Epaphroditus has um, just a few verses. But thankfully, there's a few verses, though. Mm. And, and those verses are really jam-packed mm -hmm. with um, just a snapshot of Epaphroditus' life. And Epaphroditus, um, I identify with him uh, really because he's a warrior poet. To me, um, where he's this beautiful blend, and um, for those who um, who know about Epaphroditus, you know his name means beautiful, mm. and really it comes from from um, an idol, um, Epaphrodites mm. or Aphrodite, yep. and um, so uh, Epaphroditus named after an idol. But again, like Daniel and Joseph, he doesn't reflect where he's been. Yes, correct. Um, and so um, 
Epaphroditus is 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 this beautiful blend, combination of of um, the tri part of man, you know, body, soul, and spirit, and just working. God just wiring him and um, molding him like clay and shaping him into this warrior poet where um, there's there's a number of things that are mentioned about him mm-hmm. Paul um, Paul does that and and so really Epaphroditus points me to Jesus um, where uh, Paul says that Epaphroditus is a brother, a fellow brother, you know, the same blood. Mm-hmm. And uh, think of that, um, I think of that passage where it says that, that Jesus is not ashamed to call him brethren, mm. right? So Jesus is our brother. But not um, becoming too familiar or handling casually that idea of Jesus as a brother. Right. Um, but having that connection, um, really um, the same blood, right? And then he says that um, Epaphroditus is a fellow worker and um, mm-hmm. Jesus uh, being faithful to do the works which the Father had um, for him. I think of that, um, just one example. I think of um, the fellow in John chapter 9 who was born blind and why was he born blind? And scripture is so helpful to, to tell us why. So that the works of God could be seen, right? The glory of God. So it could be grasped, held on to. Um, it says Epaphroditus was a fellow soldier, right? Where, um, and pointing us to Jesus, Jesus fought death mm. and beat it. We were just thinking about that this past Sunday, yes. right? About uh, triumphing over death. And um, also Epaphroditus being um, a messenger. He's got words to share. And they're not words of his own, right? They're, they're words given to him. And, um, and Jesus... Um, <laughs> Jesus being being that that message and and um, again Hebrews talking about um, speaking in various times mm. and diverse manners and all of that and spoken to us by His Son yeah through His Son what uh, so for our listeners out there what is the scripture verses that we can see at, 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 yeah. sure sure so it's in <laughs> Philippians chapter two. And um, you want to go all the way down, really, to verse 25. 25 yeah. So Philippians 2, 25. <laughs> and um, I have, you know, I use a, a particular version of the Bible when I'm studying and, and when I'm doing my teaching or counseling. And, but I came across a different version, and I wondered if I could read yes, that. Yes, absolutely. It, it, for me, it was just so helpful. Um, so it, it reads this. From Philippians 2. But for now, I think it is best to send Epaphroditus home to you. He has become my dear brother in the Lord. We have worked well together and fought great battles together, and he was an an encouraging minister to me in my time of need. He could not wait to see you all. Mm. He was concerned for you when he found out you knew how sick he really was. In fact, he nearly died. But once again, God was exceedingly kind and covered Epaphroditus with his mercy. And I, too, by his mercy, by God's mercy, have been spared sorrow upon sorrow and I'm excited to be sending him back to you. I can picture the joy on your faces when Epaphroditus returns. I can feel my worries falling away and welcome him joyfully in the Lord. Esteem all spiritual leaders like Epaphroditus because he placed his life in grave danger for the work of the Lord. He risked his life to serve me when you could not. Wow. So, Epaphroditus, just um, 
And you know, I was sharing the story earlier, and I'll share it again, that Jessica, when you called, you, I, I was particularly discouraged. Uh, there was some different events um, that had gone on. And when you called and, and invited me to come, I was so, so encouraged. that I was so thankful. And when you said, Let, come and talk about your favorite <laughs> Bible person, I had an immediate person in mind. And... Um, and so then the next day um, was speaking with someone who we on the phone. We were talking and, and we had a chance to pray. And he prayed that both of us, uh, we're both serving the Lord, that both would work like Epaphroditus. Who prays like that? Yeah. I mean, really, who? Uh, so I was just so thankful that the Holy Spirit put that put that character of Epaphroditus on that brother's heart and to pray that. And so that was great affirmation for me. So Yeah, thank, oh, thank yeah. you. I mean, and again, that just shows that God God is in the midst of all of this. Mm-hmm. And, you know, as you were reading the, the scripture, um, it is, to me, it's just so encouraging that um, when Paul's writing about him and he's, and he's writing about this person that, was encouraging and he's saying all this nice things and and it reminds me how important um, it is for us to have those relationships in mm, the church and absolutely. to have that support of one another that, you know, when we are in a place of, you know, just discouragement, that there is somebody that comes alongside us and, and brings that joy mm. back to us. And sometimes it's just you know them walking in the room <laughs> with a mm. smile on their face and right, and, right. and hugging you and say hey I am so I'm just so glad to see you today so uh, that that's what resonated with me when you mm. uh, were reading the scripture and and any last words on on that mm. yeah. all right all right, so we're going to finish up. And um, so if we go around very quickly, what is the one great lesson that we can take away from each of your Bible people? And um, so we'll, we'll start with Skip again. Okay. Just briefly. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> well, the one thing that I always like at the end of this whole story of Joseph <clears throat> His brothers had had uh, came up with a scheme, <clears throat> said that he had been killed. They actually sold him away. Uh, they show up in his life years down the road. God works uh, through Joseph and uh, with his whole family. This is God's way of 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 uh, growing this whole nation of Israel. <clears throat> and at the end. After uh, Jacob, the father, had died, and now the the sons, the brothers, are kind of shaking in their boots. What's Joseph going to do now? Dad's gone. Uh, He's going to come after us with revenge. And uh, after all of these things that Joseph has gone through, and as Wes pointed out, uh, Joseph uh, came out looking a whole lot better than all the trials that he had been through, prison and all this. And Joseph said, uh, Joseph said to them, don't be afraid. I am in, uh, am I in the place of God? You intended to harm me. Mm-hmm. God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done and the saving of many lives. Mm-hmm. And just the fact that he said, guys, you meant it to be harmful. You meant it for bad. God meant all of this that I've been through for good. And I think if we can look back and say, boy, I've been through an awful lot and God's done a lot of my life and not all of it's been good, but God meant it for good yeah, and God made good out of it. Thank you. Pastor Wes? <clears throat> yes, I would. Uh, I just want to read this verse of scripture here then. Nebuchadnezzar the king, I'm, looking at, I'm reading in Daniel chapter 3, verse 24. Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished which means astonished, and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound in the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose. Mm -hmm. Hmm. I'm going to say to you (laughs) that your biggest testimony to others is how you walk through the storm. Mm. 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 Have church. Mm. 
-hmm. You're going through the fire. Watch God work. Mm -hmm. God bless you. Amen. Good. Thank you. All right, Phil. So uh, the challenge for me is um, to be like Epaphroditus. Um, of all the things that he had, uh, he left nothing on the table. Um, Paul tells us that he was sick, um, even to the point of nearly dying. But he, he gave it all. He gave all that he had. So thinking about what I have in my hand, am I holding on to it for me? Or am I willing to let go of it to further the kingdom? So, so. Wow, thank you. I, I, I hope uh, the listeners <laughs> um, have been blessed because I, I truly have been blessed. And one thing I know we mentioned earlier on is that um, most, all of these stories really um, were in the midst of a godless society. Mm. And we can definitely resonate with that right now. But mm. we live in a godless society, but that does not mean that we are godless. And mm. And that is represented in each of these people. So again, thank you so much. Thank you for coming and sharing with us. You're, you're a person in the Bible that has uh, inspired you. And again, so I say thank you to Pastor Wes Beeson from Mount Zion Redemption. Redemption Church in Windsor, and uh, Pastor Skip Eggeman from Valley Community Baptist Church in Avon, and Phil Belcher from Cheshire Bible Chapel in Cheshire. And again, uh, this is our WIHS Ministry Roundtable, and um, thank you. And a reminder that this is Faith Sharing 2024, and so... <laughs> If you enjoyed our pastor program and you want to continue to bless this station, please call 860-346-1049 or you can give online at wihsradio.org. Thank you for joining us for the WIHS Ministry Roundtable, a bi-weekly video podcast and radio program that meets in studio with local ministry leaders to discuss from a biblical worldview, spiritual and practical topics that are both meaningful and engaging. The video podcasts are available at our WIHS YouTube channel, and the on-air editions can be heard Saturdays at 3.15 a.m., 12.15 p.m., and 5.10 p.m. right here at your station for Hope and Encouragement, 104.9 WIHS.